What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Oddworld New and Tasty. Last time we escaped from the inside of Rupture Farms, but we still need to make it out of the stockyard in one piece, which is not going to be easy because this is going to be the point in the game where they start to take off the training wheels, and believe me, it's not going to be gradually. The deal with these laser grids while I'm stopping while they pass over me is because if you're moving and you trip one of those grids, it usually calls in an alert, sometimes uh, in the form of sligs. Oop. More often than not, a bomb comes and chases you down. Also, those guys back there are scrabs. Ah, the silhouettes here look so good. Love the scrab designs too. Well, you'll get a better look at them uh, in later levels. Man, this this reminds me so much of uh, of Donkey Kong Country Returns, the silhouette levels. It's so good. Ooh, ooh, ooh. While you're hanging off a ledge, the scrabs can actually uh, just impale you and maul you and kill you. Chant here. Oh, I was really hoping these lights... I was really hoping these messages would uh, show up all at once. This is how it used to be in the old game. You would have to wait word by word for them to show up, and they usually don't give you... An amazing hint. The hint's really not that handy at all. <laughs> Mullock is not pleased. If you saw the first part of Rupture Farms, the first level of the game, and thought that I was just kind of lying about this game being really difficult... Oh my god, look how good that looks! Oh man! That is beautiful, that looks... Oh, shit. And just take a second and drink that in. Yeah, this is teaching us about sneaking in and out of steam, which is gonna become... Pretty necessary in a moment. Uh, so we'll wait for him to turn around. So if you thought I was just lying oh! about the difficulty of uh, the game based on the first level, just know that the first level is very easy, and then it goes into one of the sharpest difficulty spikes that I can ever remember seeing in a game. Uh, not only does the platforming and the puzzles get more complicated, you start to realize the controls are very tough to get used to. Uh, a little trick to sneaking in and out of the smoke like this. Uh, there's a little jump you have to make while his back's turned. Oh no, he turned around right as I was going off. The, there's a trick to doing that without getting shot out of the steam. Take one step more than what you think you need to take. Just take an extra step after it looks like you're concealed. Because I think the camera angle is at a slight angle. It's not perfectly straight, like a straight on profile shot. So they can see you if you're kind of dead center in the smoke. You want to take a little step forward, more than you think you need. Oh shit, this part's really hard. Let's give it one more shot. We'll jump down here. Wait for him to walk to uh, path away again. Come on. These stealth sections don't get too uh, gratuitous. Uh, they aren't. It's not like the entire game from here on out is stealth. This little stealth puzzle uh, can be pretty difficult, though. Okay, so jump into the smoke. Did I get it that time? Yes. He doesn't bother to shoot to check, so we'll wait for him to path again, and then as soon as he's behind us, make a break for it. And yeah. That is really close, man. Uh, and it just gets harder from here. Yeah, everything gets more complicated from here on out. And like what I was saying about getting used to the controls, uh, it's going to become apparent right around here. There are some things you have to consider. Uh, for instance, you have a very long startup and a very long recovery time on your animations, which means the time it takes for the start of a jump animation to play. Shit. I forgot he was there. The time it takes for the animation to start uh, until Abe is in the air, that's a, a fairly long time. 
and the time it takes after you land from a jump to then perform another action, which I'm having to do here to avoid the bomb as it comes around. Oh, unlike that, jeez. You also have a very long recovery time after you land, which means you can't instantaneously perform a crouch after you land from a jump, so your timing is to be very crisp. Uh, so we'll hop. Right there, it's not too big, too big of an issue. I would like to roll, but I have to sneak here and just take this a couple of steps at a time. Uh, and then there's also a couple of different jumps you have. The jumping works differently from most platformers. Uh, you can jump up, directly up, obviously, uh, and you essentially have a few different variations on your jump. It's not very manipulatable while you're in midair. Oh, 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 oh! By the skin of my teeth, I stole that one. Um, so you can either jump directly up, you can jump from a standstill, which will give you a shorter hop uh, with no momentum, and you can take a running start, which jumps you further ahead. But you'll also slide a little bit if you jump from a running start, so you have to watch that. Gives you more distance, but you have momentum uh, coming out of the, the jump. You'll kind of slide or take a couple steps forward, which is why for this, you like these short little hops here. This is also super hard to time, because you want to... Ah, that was really bad timing. Yeah, so aside from that, aside from those couple jump variations which you have to master, which are basically just a couple different types of hops and not even really anything you're used to in a regular platformer. Fuck. Uh, you have no control over his jumps other than that. You have no control over his jumps other than that. Okay, there. Crouch. Yeah, good. Good, good, good. And one more. Duck. And now I can just wait this one out. This Now this is good. Uh, now I'm... I should be mostly fine, I just have to wait for the slig here to path away, because what I want to do is I want to trigger the bomb while he's off screen, and then hop back up here, so he runs into it. Yeah, this is not like traditional platformers, where you have a lot of control over your movement and your bread and butter, which is jumping. Like, it, take Mario, for instance, it's very fluid to manipulate him, because he has a maximum jump height, and that's the limitation, that's the only limitation that you have uh, while playing him. Your limitation is only his maximum jump height, but you can manipulate him in midair, you can change his momentum, you can change his direction, you can do all sorts of stuff with him. Uh, here you just get varieties of short hops forward, short, uh, longer hops, and that's about it. Whereas in Mario, you have uh, your jumps and the arc of the jump depends on how like how long you're holding the stick forward, how long you're holding the button. There's a lot of like it, 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 it's very malleable compared to this, which is very rigid, and that can be that can feel very jarring. Abe doesn't have a lot of fluidity to the way he controls. It's kind of stiff. That's it can be really hard to master, especially if you're coming off of. You know, a childhood filled with those Mario, uh, style platformers. The genre that was basically the genesis of which was Mario. Uh, so to jump from that to Abe's Odyssey, that alone makes it pretty hard. Uh, but even once you're used to that, the complexity of the puzzles and the platforming itself just, it, it's, it's magical. I love it. It, it really is like no other platformer. Um, so, this is another little stealth segment. Here he's gonna path way off camera, and I'm a little paranoid. Yeah, because if I, I think if I had started moving forward, I probably would have got caught. So, I can also probably make it up to that second steam vent but I'm being pretty cautious. All right. Like, it, to kind of put a little bit more of a point on, on what I'm trying to say about the difficulty and the, uh, the way the game controls, to give you an idea, just one example, 
just mastering the art of hopping forward from a standstill for some reason feels like the hardest thing. I can't even describe like the timing of the inputs because it's just like it's this most simple shit ever. It's platforming 101. You jump and hold a direction. But because the controls are so different from what you're used to, there's something about the timing or how long you have to keep the directional input held down that makes it hard for me to do. Uh, so what I like to do... Oh, whoops. Uh, I usually hit jump. The game takes a split second to register the input and start the jump animation. And then an instant later I tap the direction. I do it one and then the other instead of both at the same time. Because if you hit both buttons at the same time, what seems to happen a lot to me is I either jump straight up, I just get the jump, or I step forward and I don't get the jump. It's like the game eats the inputs and I don't quite understand it. Um, I totally understand when people say the controls feel bad or awkward. I don't think they're bad, I think they're very, very different. And occasionally a little bad, like, it, it definitely seems like sometimes it eats your inputs. Uh, I want to angle this rock and get it to, yes, blow up the slogs. Again, another, a very aggressive, tiny, quick little enemy type we'll get a better look at uh, in the very near future. The next level, uh, well, a level coming up, we'll see um, pretty well. I had just got past those slogs when the strangest thing I saw, the big moon was before me. When some big face appeared and said I was dead, said our land was changing, was imbalanced at best. He told me my fate was to rescue the rest. For paramites and scraps had been sacred once. That was before rupture farms turned them into lunch. And they live in the temples, and that's where they still nest. And facing these creatures... That was my test. Woo! So now we have uh, successfully made it onto the Monsaic Lines, and out of Rupture Farms proper. And we've gotten a better idea now about the destiny that Abe talked about in the beginning of the game. And he also mentioned temples built to paramites and scrabs, which were once like these sacred creatures. Uh, revered, almost. And we're going to be visiting some of these temples that were built around them. Once we make it out of this short little level here. Stop. Uh. Short, short fart. Uh, there we go. Yeah, this password gimmick, that's going to be with us for a good long while. Let's read this real quick. Oh, just chant until the slig is yours. Reinforcing things from the tutorial. The passwords are going to become way more complex. So you have our, your normal, uh, like, wait, follow me, come with me, uh, freeze, all that stuff. All those basic game speak commands, if you use R2, you modify those commands to, uh... They usually function as password things. You have a short whistle, a long whistle, a uh, fart, and... Oh, jeez, I can't remember what the other one is. I'm sure it'll come back to me eventually. It's one that gets used way less often, I remember that much. It's probably why I don't remember specifically what it is right now. Uh, everything's gonna come in handy, though. So that that right away makes the, the controller layout pretty dense. Uh, with just, like... So you have four different D-pad commands, plus the modifier for all these game speed commands. Uh, inhabit these lands. Millions have died in their own lost hands. Sacred, but... They said we must continue their... Ah, the Shrikel shall come from their spirit's unrest to aid the victor after this quest. Yeah, again, just telling us that the animals in this land were 
uh, considered at one point to be kind of sacred until the shameless businessmen, uh, the Gluckins of Rupture Farms, came and started hunting and poaching everything around and enslaving the Madokins uh, to make meat. Short, long, fart. SLF. It helps if you either cheat and write these down uh, once they... It, it's Simon Says, basically. You just repeat the commands. It helps if you either write them down... Yay, levers. This is telling you to flip levers uh, to hop in and out of these holes and they'll take you to different places. Uh, it helps if you either cheat and write them down or if you come up with a shorthand. Short, long, short. SLS. Fart. Yeah, I tend to just use short, long, short. Or if you want to break it down either, even further, you can just go like SLS, F. Uh, one way or another. Just as long as you have a system to remember, because the passwords get pretty long. Single blue hand shall bear the brands and unleash the power to destroy boss lands. Gluckin ministers will, flu will fume in alarm as the Shrikul awaken halts the flesh farm. That reminds me, I have a pretty cool little story about the moon from that cutscene. Uh, the original release of Abe's Odyssey was supposed to feature Madokins with four fingers, but they were going to have issues releasing the game in Japan, so they changed it to three, and the issue is such a weird story, too. So basically, from my understanding, people who worked in meatpacking factories in Japan were seen as being like a part of a lower class than others. And since they worked in meatpacking facilities, they tended to have a lot of uh, industrial accidents that left people without fingers and missing fingers, rather. And this little crude drawing is telling us we need to go get uh, something down here and then use it up there, the bell song. And hence, four-fingered characters became something of a taboo because of the implications about class and classism. So they changed it in the game to Madokins having three fingers to avoid offending people and... Oh, bees. Right, the bees can kill you, but they're gonna attack this free Madokin over here because Abe's a little bit of an asshole. Uh, never attribute to malice, but you can instead attribute to incompetence. And we all know that Abe isn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. Uh, we have the bell song now. You don't actually need to memorize it. It's not like the passwords we've been coming up against in the uh, in this level. It'll just play automatically once we get up here, or once we start chanting up here. Uh, yeah, so that's why they have three fingers plus a thumb instead of four, as originally intended. I think subsequent games eventually went back to uh, using the original four-fingered Madokan design, but that's why they only have three usually. That's why uh, the handprint on the moon was like that. There's also another story real quick that accompanies that moon cutscene uh, that his hand was over in that cutscene because it was originally planned that meteors were going to hit the moon uh, and gradually form the handprint you saw in it. Uh, that got cut because of... Well, the budget just wasn't there for it. Anyway, though, that's gonna do it for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.